Hey guys, welcome back everybody. Hope you all are doing great. Guys, this is part 7 of this network topology configuration and today we will see some additional configurations of DHCP. See, if you are watching all videos in this series in sequence, that means you are already familiar with all previous configurations. Like this network is live right now, means all end devices are able to access network resources as well as all end machines are able to access internet. Or you can say all end machines are able to access remote side. But till now we have not configured the uh, VPN on ASA firewall or on the router. But later on we will see the VPN configuration as well like IPsec configuration. Right. First of all, let me work on the improvement on this network. What can be the additional configurations here like policies configurations. Okay. So in upcoming days, we will work on the improvement, maybe on the route filtering and then we will connect uh, same, uh, we will, you know, connect this network with a branch office network, right, through internet. And then we'll see how to configure the VPN or IPsec there. Done. But today configuration is on distribution layer switch one. Guys, see the issue is what, what is the issue over here? I have some servers in my network, like server one and server two. VLAN 40 is server VLAN, right? And subnet for the servers is this one, 192.168.4.0 slash 24. And these servers are able to access internet as well as outside users are able to access this server. So how outside users are able to access this server? With the help of one-to-one -one netting on ESA firewall. So in the last class, in the last video, we had configured a static NAT, one-to-one -one bidirectional NAT on ESA firewall so that outside users can access internet, right? And guys, to configure bidirectional NAT, you have to define source IP means a private IP address, IP address of your server, as well as public IP address. Means ESA firewall will translate private IP address into which public IP address. So we have two public IP address on ASA firewall for server one. In the same way, we have to configure two public IP address for server two on ASA firewall. Why two public IP address? Because see, ASA firewall is connected with two different ISP. Now, if you are thinking, if you have two public IP address, then how outside user will came to know that which public IP address should I use to access this server? So for that, actually, you are going to set up the DNS, domain name system. Right, so DNS is going to track which ISP is up. If ISP one is up, like ISP one is your primary ISP, right? And uh, for the primary ISP, your public IP address is 1.1.1.2. Here you can see the public IP address, right? For server one. So via primary ISP, ISP one public IP address is 1.1.1.2. So if primary ISP is up, then DNS will provide this IP address to the users on the internet. Let's say your application on the server, on your internal server is HTTPS. You are running one application. Your service is HTTPS, right? And domain name is pmnet.com, pmnet.com. So if someone from the internet want to access pmnet.com, right? So simply they will open their browser and then they will type domain name there in the browser, www.pmnet.com. Their machine will resolve domain name into the pipe public uh, sorry into the IP address right into the public IP address so your machine should need uh, the IP address of DNS server you have to configure DNS server IP address on this machine so it will send request to DNS server to get the IP address of pmnet.com and DNS server is going to provide IP address for this domain name for this fully qualified domain name now DNS server have two public IP address, 1.1.1.2 and 1.1. Sorry, 2.2.2.2. So you have to configure the DNS in such a way so that it should track the ISP according to the active ISP. It will provide IP address right to the machines. So we have two public IP addresses and DNS is going to manage these two public IP addresses, right? So with the help of these two public IP addresses, outside user can access my internal server. But if ISP1 is down, then outside user can even access uh, uh, internal server with the help of this public IP address, 2.2.2.2. So that time DNS will provide this public IP address to the users. 
right? So that is completely different scenario. That is configuration of DNS. Here we have two public IP addresses for server one. In the same way, we we need two public IP addresses for server two as well, right? So we need to configure again bidirectional NAT on ASA firewall. Two bidirectional NAT. One for ISP one, one for ISP two. And on the ISP side, you will have the DNS as I told you. But while configuring bidirectional NAT on ASA firewall, you need the private IP address, IP address of server. But how servers are getting IP address, guys, from the DSCP server, right? So distribution layer switch one is my DSCP server. And still see we have some pro one problem. Problem is we have only one DSCP server in the network. So if distribution layer switch one will goes down, that means then end devices cannot get IP address from the DHCP. So same pool what if a pool is running on distribution layer switch one, you have to configure those pool on distribution layer switch two also or on any other device like on router you can configure on ASA firewall you can configure for the backup, right? So you can take the backup of your DHCP configuration. Uh, sorry, you can uh, configure same DHCP pool on any other device as well on at least two device for the redundancy for the backup. And now if distribution layer switch one is the DHCP server and the DHCP server is active means this user can get IP address. But as DHCP server is providing IP address to the server server IP address will be keep changing. Right server IP address is keep changing. This NAT rule if default route is present on outside ISP one interface and this NAT rule if default route is present on outside ISP two interface for now. So route include 0 dot 0 dot 0. You can see default route is present on outside ISP one interface, right? So it is going to use this NAT rule. But if ISP one bill goes down, ASA firewall is going to install default route towards ISP two, then it will use second NAT rule, this NAT rule. Done. Now let me verify it. What we can do, we can access any device here. First of all, let me access the PC and on this PC, I'm going to say IP DHCP. Check this PC is able to get IP from DHCP or not. Draw process is working. PC have got the IP address 192.168.1.1 and let me directly pin to 8.8.8. .8. And see ping is working. Now let me access the server, server one. But this time it is not sure what IP address server will get. Server can get any IP address from the DHCP. So IP DHCP. Dora, done. And this server have got the IP address that is 4.1. Same IP address which I have configured in NAT, right? Now let me ping to 8.8.8 .8 from the server. See server is able to access internet. Now let me access ISP1. Let me check outside users are able to access my server or not. So from here I can say ping and the public IP address of my server is 1.1.1.2. But you can see ping is not working. Let me access ASA firewall. On ASA firewall I am going to debug NAT just to check that ASA firewall is doing translation or not. So what we can do here I can say debug NAT 255. See ASA firewall is translating public IP address into this private IP address, correct pr private IP address, but outside users are not able to access it. The reason by default ASA firewall does not allow traffic from lower security level to higher security level. So we need to configure here what access control list to let me say access list. Access list the name of access list. Let's say out side to inside and permit which traffic you want to permit uh, you can permit TCP UDP IP so see the question mark I am going to permit IP packet all packet all traffic IP then source source is any, any private IP address for the server submit 
for the any and then the server IP address here I can say what host what will be the IP address of server 192.168.4.1 so any traffic coming from the internet for this host firewall will allow that right or here also we can say any also right like we have multiple servers so we can say any here what we can say host destination also any and it enter now we need to apply this access list on orchard isp one interface so say access group and the name of your access list name of your acl is outside to inside outside to inside then direction in and then on which interface so i want to apply it on interface outside isp1 now you can verify it go to isp1 and from isp1 again i am going to ping to this public ip address and now you can see i am able to ping the server right now today i want to bind this ip address the ip address of server in the dscp so like here you can see server mac sorry uh, server mac address is so ip server mac address is this one so i want to bind this mac address for this ip address right for this ip address what i want that whenever a user with this mac address will try to get ip address from the dscp server server should always provide same ip that is 192.164.4.1 so let me take you to dscp server so where the dscp distribution layer switch one let me access it and on distribution layer switch one we can say ip so sorry enable password is cisco at the rate one two three and say so ip dscp binding so see the binding guys and the mac address of this ip address the mac address of server is correct or not you can verify it let me run the command again yeah and now let me access the server here you can see the mac address of server and the mac address here in the dscp binding table so mac address is 0050 here it's saying 0050 Five zero and first two value uh, indicate donate donate the interface type. This is for Ethernet, right? So this is the inter interface type and then the MAC address. Now I am going to bind this MAC address for this IP address, right? On the DSCP. In the same way, you have to bind the IP address for server two also. So like I want server two should always get. 4.2 IP address right so how to bind it this is my actual topic for today video right now to bind it here you can uh, check the DSCP pool do so run section DSCP so you can see we have multiple pool and I am going to modify the configuration of this pool for VLAN 40 for server VLAN so let me open this pool say IP DSCP pool and the name of pool is vlan 40 let me copy it and let me paste it over here now in this pool so say here host command is going to be host and then ip address what ip address you want to configure for the server so server should get always this ip 192.168.4.1 and then what it's saying this command may not be used with network origin okay and then mask 255 255 255 dot is there anything else no then here actually i think this uh, device is not supporting this command here we can say client identifier and now it is actually asking you the mac address of client so first of all you will define the interface type that is 01 for ethernet and then mac address of the client mac address of client is this one let me copy it and let me paste it over here so client identifier mac address is this one so you can see actually this command is not supported on this device on distribution layer switch one so what we have to do here we have to replace the dhcp server right either we can add a separate dhcp server in the network or 
I can try to configure DSCP on router, right? But guys, this is the process to configure each one. Distribution layer switch one does not support this feature. Okay, so we have to replace the DSCP. Otherwise, the IP address of server will be keep changing, and uh, you have configured the one to one NAT on ESA firewall for server so that outside user can access my internal server. But if server will get any different IP address except 192.168.1.4.1 then even server cannot access internet as well as outside user cannot access internet right I think server can access internet because we have uh, the you know general NAT rule on ESA firewall but outside user cannot access the server so okay this is uh, the scenario and we'll uh, perform this configuration in next video I will make one a small video on DSCP after that we will move to the next configuration maybe I will upload few more videos four to five more videos in this series because I am covering everything right from the zero okay so that's all for today guys if you like this video if you have learned something please hit on like button and the command to configure to bind IP address with MAC address is exactly same right uh, go to the IP DSCP pool then uh, use command host then define the IP address of server like you can try it on router say go to router where is the router let me access the router and I am going to configure DHCP pool for server VLAN on the router for server VLAN only for VLAN 40 only so enable password is Cisco at the rate 1 2 3 config T and here say IP DHCP pool IP DHCP pool is let's say VLAN underscore 40 here I am going to define network which network 192.168.4.0 submit mask 255.255.255.0 and then default router is the 192.168.4. last IP address from the subnet is uh, running on distribution layer switch 1 and second last IP address is running on distribution layer switch 2 and uh, the default gateway is the virtual IP address I am performing load balancing at distribution layer so guys for VLAN 10 and 20 switch 1 is the active switch and for VLAN 20 and 30 the switch 2 is the active switch so virtual IP address is 4.100 so let me 4.100 and DNS server IP address is let's say dot a dot 8 then this is my DSCP configuration here and then say host IP address 192.168.4.1 right then submit mask 255.255.255.255 here also I am not able to run this command then I have to definitely use a separate server here this router is also not supporting this command today we will meet soon in next video guys till then stay safe Bye-bye. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.